What is going on guys? So this is the epitome of cringe in my opinion. They have this feminist professor from Calgary on and she's talking about why they should ban the red pill movie and then she starts talking about red pill ideology and what she thinks it means. She gets it so wrong I wanted to jump through my computer screen and yell at her and tell her she's a fucking moron. Anyways, if you guys can get through this, it's totally cringe. I'm warning you right now, but let me know what you think about it. I'll see you in the next video. At the center of this controversy is the film The Red Pill. For a look at the film and the culture of men's rights activism it deals with, we've asked Rebecca Sullivan to join us. She's a professor of women's studies at the University of Calgary. So let's start with the controversy, if we can. Did you ever imagine that you would see the words feminism is cancer at an event that's happening at your workplace? It was frightening. I won't deny that. It was sickening to wake up in the morning. Um, I know it, it broke last night, but you know I made the mistake of staying off Twitter for a whole hour. And uh, I wake up in the morning getting ready for work, and this is what I see. You know, this is, this is scary. And I think we have to name it as scary. I think we've been turning a blind eye, making excuses, calling it, you know, underground or, you know, a minor extremist movement or, you know, pathetic. Yeah, it is pathetic, but it's also dangerous and really, really scary. Uh, so the term red pill didn't actually originate with men's rights no. community at all. <laughs> Can you tell us where it came from and basically what it means now, how it's evolved? Yeah, and I think, you know, people have to kind of bear with me as I explain this because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> it's fundamentally a bad metaphor. But the red pill, of course, comes from the film The Matrix. You can take the blue pill and go about your merry way, or you can take the red pill and enter the matrix. Well, then the, um, a, 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 a group on Reddit were um, discussing not just men's rights, but also the pickup artist movement and how um, you know, women kind of owe them sex. And so the criticism is that the blue pill is the women you know, saying that they want to be treated with respect and they want equality. The red pill is a metaphor for what women really want, the real world. Which is not equality, apparently. Okay. Is domination and subjugation. That's what women really want. Okay. Well, the film has generated a lot of controversy. Um, do you think us even sitting here talking about it actually gives it any some undue attention, normalizes some of its arguments? I'm certainly afraid of that. I'm certainly afraid of that. And... Um, I think that we do have to be mindful of that. And maybe a year or two, I would have said, yeah, I'm not talking about it. Let's not give it any attention. But here's the thing. It has been mainstreamed now. People are talking about it. We have a leadership candidate for the Conservative Party of Canada tweeting out to an elected politician with Wild Rose, Maxine Bernier and Derek Fildebrandt, tweeting out red pill memes. Wait. Right? In your... It's a wink. Interpretation. Yeah. yeah, it's a wink. And we know it's a wink because what do we have? We have the Wild Rose on campus and the Conservative Party of Canada on campus jointly hosting this film. It has been mainstreamed. And what this, what this culture relies on is the um, naivete of decent Canadians, of saying there's no way people really believe this. There's no way people are really acting upon this. And certainly there could be no way that they are infiltrating our respected political parties in Canada. So let's cut through that naivete then and tell me about what the film is and what people it portrays. What do they stand for? Um, they stand for the right of men to have um, mostly sexual rights. It's, it's the right of men to um, engage in any sexual activity that they want and you know, have entitlement to women's bodies. Um, the men's rights movement points to a number of, of, of very real issues in our society that there are very few resources available to men who experience domestic or gender or sexual violence um, to the fact that um, uh, suicide rates are very high for men, incarceration culture, high dropout rates, lowering participation in post-secondary um, education. These are all very real and pressing and urgent issues. 
but they go from there immediately to it's women's fault because they are denying men their natural rights as men, meaning if only we could just have sex with whoever and whatever we want, whenever we want, then maybe we wouldn't have to rape you. Well, I guess that is exactly why it's controversial. <laughs> exactly why it's controversial. <laughs> and, uh, we thank you very much for coming in and explaining this because it has been a bit of a cloudy issue for many. So, And that's, and that's what they're banking on. As I said, they're banking on decent Canadians not understanding what they're saying. Oh. And we need to understand what is being said. Rebecca Sullivan, thank you for helping us do that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank if you. they smoke, I'm turned off. If they drink, I'm out of there. Uh, if they're stupid, I'm bored. If they're mean, I'm bored. If they're trying to use me, I'm out of there. So I guess I'm very picky. If they don't work out, I'm not interested. If the mind is lazy and the body's lazy, who cares?